All right, Frank, this is Paul. Uh, we took out the weights to gain access, and it appears that they might have been on maybe a piece of bed rail or something, but some pretty gnarly cuts, and it's ferrous metal, so we're going to go back with uh, stainless steel angle irons. We're actually going to use stainless steel angle irons for part of the repair that we do, and we're just going to extend them when we put them in a couple feet longer so that we can put these weights back on them. The weights are steel and not stainless. We're going to clean them up and paint them real good. They were actually all rusted together. So we just don't want to introduce rust. Rot has a tendency where you've got wood, steel oxidizing uh, and you get that rust on the wood and in the wood. Uh, it just actually start, helps start that process in the wood for some reason. Uh, the, oxid, the, uh, the, the rotting process in the wood. So anyway, that's what's going on there. Um, so, uh, since Monday we've got to hit a few licks on it. Uh, we took out the old, where they capped the old uh, peel. We took those caps out and, uh, over here, yeah, they're right here. Interestingly, we found where they had used some uh, epoxy material in here. Uh, Looks like, it looks like they, I don't know what they gnawed that out with, whether that was a beaver working on that or a groundhog or just what gnawed that out, but, uh, or raccoons, I don't know. We took it out in two pieces. This piece actually lifted right off. It had been epoxied down to the old keel, and the epoxy had hardened and all the shaking. That had just split right apart. There was no bonding here's at all. Here's actually some pieces that just flaked off of it. Yeah, so there was no bonding at all of the epoxy, and probably uh, all the vibration is what did that trick to it. So kind of interesting, uh, and of course it was it fell way short of getting to the back of the boat. It was stopping. It actually was stopping forward. It was placed about here, and it was stopping forward of where the rudder goes. So we're going to end up with a new cap. We're going to cap this with one continuous cap, uh, and this is going to join up. Let me get rid of one of these for now. Yeah, and shave some off there. We're going to cap it with a new piece of white oak. We're going to go all the way up uh, to where the joint was, and then we'll be trimming this off, you know, for for where the new transom bow goes. Then uh, these. These pieces will go in. You'll notice at the end, we've cut them on a taper, and so they go in. Like you so, I'll pull this guy, it was in there earlier, I'll pull this guy out for now, but this goes in here. And uh, you'll also notice we've cut the rib back in here. These are the ribs. And we've cut this rib back to this position. And we're going to be putting a cross member crossways to these two pieces, and then uh, and bolting uh, bolting the the uh, strut through the keel and through a cross member that crosses both of these up there by the rib, and then we'll be tying the ribs into the new cross member. I don't know if that made perfect sense to you or not. Maybe I'll send you a drawing of what we're going to be doing. But we've got all our pieces cut uh, and. Uh, this will all be one area that's bonded together and all of the vibration in the strut will be passed into this big massive piece of wood. And this is basically the way Chris Craft did it. This might be a little heavier than Chris Craft did it, but it's pretty close. It's a lot heavier engine than this boat too. Yeah, it's a lot heavier engine than <laughs> this boat than the Chris Craft uh, put in them typically. So, uh, uh, but it's, uh, we're, we're borrowing off of their design principles and their boats have been out there, you know, we're. We're talking to a guy that's both been out there since 1941 right now and looking at putting a new bottom on it for him. So, um, uh, you know, 70 some years. So the proof's in the pudding on those guys. Um, at any rate, uh, so that's the, how the repair on the back. We're basically ready to start going back together with this back here. And of course, we've got all the other little scope items like making sure that we put a grease line in from the packing on the rudder and the packing on the shaft log and uh, all of those things. Um, 
so we won't be forgetting those. What am I forgetting to talk about, though? But that cross member that we put in, I was talking about the angle irons earlier, the cross member that we put in between the two stringers, that will tie the strut to the two stringers, will be supported by uh, the stainless steel angle iron. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you some of the goodies we found in here, uh, or Taylor found, I should say. He's been doing the main part of the work back here. Here were, these, these lag bolts were ferrous metal. So they are rusting out, and that's where the threads are gone on most of them too. And this is what was holding the uh, angle irons angle into the end. into the stringer. So this was about gone. This supporting system was just about gone, and then that was what was holding the. Uh, well, anyway, we'll, we will be going back with stainless steel. We don't put ferrous in the boats. Uh, so uh, what else? We, we, oh yeah, another thing we found is down in here, uh, down where the keel and the plywood bottom. joint where they lock into one another, which we have we have that joint open right now so that we can clean it out. Taylor got all the screws out and he cleaned this joint out. We actually had a screw, uh, here, here's one of them right here. We actually had a, found a screw wedged in there like that. So there was no way, I don't know if you can, if you've got enough light to see the, the head of the screw wedged in here in this space. Well, there's a screw there, so there's no way, no matter how many screws, it's pretty much like that right there. So no matter how many screws they were putting in the bottom, here's this gap that they never could, uh, that they never could uh, Close get up. closed up. Uh, so uh, this, the problem was sloppy workmanship and uh, apparently not knowing uh, what they were doing. Uh, so uh, uh, we're going to correct all that. And uh, we'll be going back together with it on uh, probably Monday. So we'll be putting all this back together with 52 million. What else? Loading guides. Oh, yeah, I got your loading guides. We got the covers on those. Uh, 